Salve Maria. I'm Father Ryan Murphy of the Heralds of the Gospel, and it is my pleasure to welcome you once again for this seventh day of our Christmas Novena. Please don't forget to press the like button and also consider subscribing to our YouTube channel. As we have journeyed across these past few days leading up to Christmas, we have contemplated the role of the Blessed Virgin Mary in God's coming into the world, how her fiat, her yes, set in motion the story of our redemption. Let's continue where we left off yesterday, and God willing, today we will also have the opportunity to briefly contemplate the glorious mission of St. Joseph, her most chaste spouse. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Opening Prayer Mary Most Holy, Refuge of sinners, and consolation of those who fight for thy divine Son, as we approach the Feast of the Nativity, we, thy children, implore thee on bended knee to make us feel in our souls the innocence that surrounds the crib of the infant God. He is but a tender child, yet his gaze searches out the ploys of the evil one in order to expose them. Give us, O Mother, the grace to be this gaze of God over the whole world, this gaze that attracts souls of goodwill to the joys of virtue and that tirelessly pursues the snares of Satan. You make us, O Mary, a promise that we must never doubt, the promise of thy triumph. Send us new graces, pour into our souls a perfect and childlike confidence. Come, O Queen of Victories, with thy holy and virginal spouse, Saint Joseph, and transform us into submissive and humble instruments for the exaltation of thy Son, our Redeemer. Amen. In our previous meditation, we discussed how after idealizing the figure of the Messiah in her mind and heart for 15 years, the moment of the Incarnation finally arrived. When she spoke the fiat, a great wonder took place in the most virginal cloister of the Virgin Mary. For nine months, a prodigy that would be greater than the creation of the entire universe, of all angels and all of men. Let us consider that at Holy Mass, we witness a miracle that is in several aspects less than the miracle of the incarnation of our Lord Jesus Christ in the virginal womb of the Blessed Virgin Mary. In the Holy Mass, the substances of bread and wine are transubstantiated into the most precious body, blood, soul, and divinity of our Lord Jesus Christ. In the Incarnation, the substance has another name, Mary. That is, it is the Blessed Virgin Mary who during nine months of sublime coexistence donates from herself all that is necessary to form and feed the divine little body of our Lord Jesus Christ. In the Holy Mass, this is operated by means of bread and wine. The adorable body of the child Jesus is formed with the holy, sacred, most venerable contribution of the blood of the Blessed Virgin. But there is still another miracle that happened in the Incarnation and which does not occur in Holy Mass. In the Incarnation of the Word, the immortal soul of our Lord was created. Just as a child bears the stamp of his parents, for his characteristics and features will depend on those of his parents, we can consider that the child Jesus was a Hebrew child who inherited the attributes of the Blessed Virgin Mary and those of his virginal father, Saint Joseph. A child inherits all from his parents, but with Jesus, his personality is divine. Nevertheless, wanting to respect the natural processes and natural laws that God created, God harmonized them in the unique case of Jesus. 
Such was the holiness of the Blessed Virgin Mary and St. Joseph that the little Jesus appears as their true son. The moral physiognomy of the child Jesus was represented as a junction of that of the Blessed Virgin Mary and St. Joseph. In the same way that it is natural in a family for the child to have the characteristics of both parents. Theology has said a lot, of course, not all, about Mary, but as for St. Joseph, a lot remains to be discovered and spoken. So how appropriate to admire for a few moments the great figure of St. Joseph. Unfortunately, this glorious patriarch is often forgotten and devotion to him falls short of what he merits. Let's avoid that error. It is unconceivable that Jesus, as the God-man, born of an immaculate mother, would have, as his adoptive father, a dull and undistinguished person. God poured out unique gifts and privileges on the noble Saint Joseph. In the Gospel, Joseph is described as righteous. When he noted that his wife was with child, he never doubted her purity, never. Rather, in the face of a great mystery that he could not comprehend, he felt unworthy and adopted a stance of humility and inferiority. Crushed with sorrow, he was about to withdraw from her holy presence. In this circumstance, he experienced perhaps the greatest tribulation that anyone has ever faced, and he bore it as a hero of confidence and fidelity. As we know, finally he received a revelation from an angel. Mary, his spouse, would be a mother without ceasing to be a virgin. She was to be the mother of God. And contrary to what he thought, he was worthy of his heavenly spouse. Indeed, from all eternity, St. Joseph was, in God's mind, endowed with the vocation of being the head of the Holy Family. He was called to guard and defend the greatest treasures, God himself and his Holy Mother. We see once again a virtue shine forth, one that deserves admiration and imitation, the virtue of humility. God chose and exalted Saint Joseph for his great humility. The Gospels do not record a single word of Saint Joseph. He was neither talkative or boisterous. On the contrary, like Mary, he was serious, modest, and unassuming. We see how God loves these virtues and chooses those who practice them for great missions. These virtues may not be valid in our egoistic world, but they are cherished in God's eyes. Look at whom God chose to share his company in the humble house of Nazareth for 30 years, a lady and a man, Mary and Joseph, who were discreet and humble. We have only begun to lift the veil of the great Saint Joseph, who has such a central role in the sacred events of the incarnation of the Lord. But for today, our time is up. But let's continue our meditation tomorrow, and let us turn to Saint Joseph. As the head of the Holy Family, Jesus was obedient to Saint Joseph, and this relationship between son and father is maintained in eternity. In heaven, our Lord heeds Saint Joseph's requests with special benevolence. So let's ask Saint Joseph for all we need, not only for physical and material necessities, but most of all, for spiritual graces and benefits for ourselves and for all who are dear to us. Saint Joseph, spouse of Mary and virginal father of Jesus, pray for us. Now let us proceed with our final prayer, after which I will give you my blessing. My mother, 
on this night in which thy divine Son calls us to make another step toward union with him, look upon us and consider not what we are, but what we can be if we would fully trust in the great promise that you planted in our souls. In light of this promise, O Mother, engrave in our souls thy supremely sweet spirit, both confident and faithful. For it is only by participating in thy gifts and virtues that we will be able to give thy tender infant the gratitude that he desired to receive from those most especially called, but that you reserve for your children and apostles of the latter times. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.